Yeah, you be okay. You can eat and listen and all that. That's I guess how it works. So Tammy said whoever normally introduces people is on vacation. So we said we're totally cool with introducing ourselves. Um, and they asked us to use microphones today, which is funny in this little room. But um, we're going to. But we're going to use microphones yes. in this little room. <laughs> I feel like we should be giving a more inspiring talk with the microphones. So we're really happy to be here. Uh, my name is Rod Northcutt. I'm a professor of sculpture at Miami University. And I'm Kate Curry. Uh, I don't know what I am. I'm the executive director of Make Tank, which is a nonprofit we run. Um, the only way in which I'm currently affiliated with Miami University is I'm an alum from there, and I am right now um, enrolled in graduate school in transformative education there. So we do co-direct uh, the Kinetics Festival as well as the organization that runs it, Make Tank Inc., and we're both sculptors, so that's one thing that kind of, uh, we, we do speak the same language, which means that we have to be innovative, we have to learn how to make things, we have to teach others how to make things often, we have to uh, manage the making of bigger projects, and that's what we're going to talk a little bit about today. Um, but I was going to start off with some images that we don't see so much where we are. Uh, we have lived in cities, we've lived in New York, and Chicago, Detroit, and LA, and now we're currently living in Oxford. Has anybody been up to Oxford? How do you like it? Yeah, it's okay, yeah. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> Yeah, it's all right. Um, it, but it's not sort of a hustle and bustle that you normally see in a big city. And that's one of the things I, I personally miss. Like coming down here today, I'm glad to be able to talk with you. I'm also really glad to be able to get down into the downtown area of the city. So in the city, maybe you see these uh, around here once while tall bikes. Probably not one as tall as the one over on the left, the, the famous stupid tall bike, which is 14 feet tall. And it's S-T-O-O-P-I-D. Um, but tall bikes are, are, are pretty common in a lot of the areas that I was living in. Um, in addition to, to tall bikes, there are other phenomena that go on in some of the bigger cities, especially on the coast, like the East Coast and West Coast, um, which are these kinetic sculpture races. Anybody ever been to a kinetic sculpture race? You get your chance. All right, one. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's that's yeah. <laughs> so you, uh, you all get a chance to do this on the 17th because uh, there'll be a kinetic sculpture race there. Uh, so, but, but these are. These are based on um, ingenuity, making, and the desire to do something strange. People don't get paid to do this at all. This is not like if you go into sculpture and you want to get into a gallery, you don't, you don't do this necessarily. But people who really want to do stuff like this decide to do it. And then thousands of people rally around them at these big events. So this is an event in California in Arcata, the Kinetic Grand Championship. It's a three-day race. How many miles is it? It's 44 miles. 44 over miles three days. over sand and water and uh, mud and asphalt. Actually, this one's from the Baltimore race. There's another one in Baltimore. Uh, the Kinetic Sculpture Race out there, this is kind of the, one of the main pieces. It's run by the American Visionaries Art Museum, and this is their, their vehicle. Um, but in Baltimore, it's a single day race, uh, only 17 miles, but also you have the challenges of sand and mud and asphalt. And you have to cross the bay. And you got to cross the bay. So, it, I mean, when you're building a bike for all that stuff, especially a multi-person bike, it's a, it's a hell of a challenge. Here's some of the other um, pretty strange things that you see at these. You see a lot of animals. Um, you see people who really try to make feats of engineering, and they all break. Because this stuff breaks. It is destined to break. Our stuff breaks, their stuff breaks. When you take a chance and you're not NASA, stuff breaks. Even NASA <laughs> sometimes breaks. This is uh, from the Burning Man project. So you see a lot of the stuff out on the playa. Anybody go to Burning Man? Awesome. So you've seen stuff like this, probably ridden stuff like this out on the playa. And Kate and I realized uh, when she was approached um, a long time ago to do something like this that, you know, we thought all this stuff was really cool. And it's not happening in Oxford. And you can tell the story of, of how you're able to kind of make it happen in Oxford. So um, back in the day, I used to be a member of city council in Oxford. And 2010 was the city's bicentennial. Uh, I got tricked into being in charge of the bicentennial. And so I only had a very small amount of money for a year's worth of programming. And one of the things I did was put together a really goofy committee of people to help me. One of those people, uh, his name is Jim McWilliams, and he and I had been in a sculpture program together at Miami forever ago, and he is now an art teacher at the high school in Talawanda. 
And he's really into Red Bull races. So there weren't any images up there from the Red Bull races, but Red Bull hosts things that are a little bit more like a soapbox derby, where it's not, things aren't generally as pedal powered, they're just kind of taking advantage of gravity. And Jim was really into these races, he'd been in a few, and he said, let's do a kinetic sculpture race as part of the bicentennial. So I'm like, okay. So we shut down High Street, we had, this constitutes everyone who was in that race. Uh, <laughs> I spent $50 on it because I ordered everybody a medal. And that was pretty much it. it. You know, it didn't take any time at all, 15 minutes down the street. And we had maybe 30, 40 people come out of shops and kind of watch it happen. Some and cheered, I some thought it was like, done. <laughs> right. I have no idea what's going on. Right. And I think this was like Rod's first or second year at Miami, maybe. And he was in it, as you can see him there on his bike. And afterwards, he and a few other people who were there were so excited. And they're like, oh my god, that was amazing. We have to keep it going. Right. So now we're we want here. it to go. We want to continue. <laughs> the text says it, so it must be true. So uh, we did make it keep going, and we, we got a lot bigger. So our, our, our largest kinetics festival had between 2,500 and 3,000 people, which was a pretty big jump. Now, it took a lot to get there, but... Um, Sadly, I'm still wearing the same pants. I just noticed before I that picture, I'm like, crap, that's like three years later and I have the same outfit on. Yeah, we don't, we don't change much. <laughs> Uh, but we also changed the name. So it was the Kinetic Sculpture Race. We decided to rename it the Oxford Kinetics Festival. It seemed like it might be a little more inclusive of some of the other things that we um, want to be able to include in this because it's not just a race anymore. Um, we've had you know, multiple iterations of this and we started last year with a theme. So last year is a, a flight-based theme. This year's theme is sort of circus, carnival, American Horror Story, season four, anything that has to do with <laughs> sort of uh, carnival or circus atmosphere. So when we first started getting together after that initial race and talking about keeping it going, we made the decision to move to a festival instead of just a race as a way of being more inclusive and involving people who, there's a select little group of people in the world who are gonna really build some big kinetic contraption, take the time to do it, be able to do it, and then bring it out and race it. And I said, if we're gonna put in all this time and energy, let's try to involve a bigger group of people. So even though we were kind of inspired initially by those bigger races, we've gone on a tangent because we still have races, but they're not really the main focus of the day as much as all these other events that people can come and participate in and learn all kinds of things about kinetics while they're there. Right, so we do still have a race and we, Give awards for this, so people are competing not only for glory, but also for a handmade trophy made out of old bike parts and whatever types of trophies have been donated to us that we bastardize and Frankenstein together. This year they're all Taekwondo based, most of them. Right, and last year they're all goat, goats. Goats, yeah, we goat goats. trophies. <laughs> Just we whoever gives goats. us trophies that year. So if you have any trophies you want to give us, especially, you know, the weirder the better, like boating trophies or pistol, you know, competition Ooh, trophies, that'd be, be cool. Um, <laughs> might determine next year's theme by the type of trophies that we get. Uh, we did realize though that, you know, to do all this, we gotta teach people about this. So it's, there's not a culture that is, that is here the same way that there's a culture in, uh, let's say, um, San Francisco, where there are a lot of tall bikes being made and a lot of people are making things for the Burning Man project. So we thought, well, we'll, we'll kind of spread the word. It was kind of arrogant, like, we want to change the culture of Oxford, but shit, I wanted to change the culture of Oxford. I, wasn't, I just wasn't excited enough, and this got me really excited. Um, so in doing so, we decided to start hosting these workshops because, yeah, you can have an idea to build a tall bike or an adult-sized big wheel or, you know, a bike that looks like a giant pickle, but actually <coughs> making it happen takes, it takes welding, and not everybody welds. And um, in sculpture, we will. We do a lot of good work, <laughs> and we thought we might be able to, to help that cause. So uh, after we started hosting these workshops, we did see a lot of interesting bikes come out of it. So we didn't have the stupid tall, but this is a triple tall. When you're riding on this one on the left here, um, it is exhilarating and terrifying. <laughs> I mean, your knuckles are so white. Uh, the guy who made it is riding in here. He's, he's, he's so graceful, though. He, can, he, can, he doesn't even need to like, get up on a ladder or anything. He can just kind of get it going and climb up and climb down. And I, I just <laughs> fall on my butt. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I've watched Rod fall a lot. Off yeah, the I fall a it's lot. It's really funny. <laughs> it's, it's pretty entertaining. So we get a lot of kids involved with these. We, it, we, we realize that a lot of the people who are showing up to the workshops with the professors and the kids of the professors, which 
is cool, but we also realize that that's, again, a really small segment of the population. And, and what Kate was saying before, you know, realizing that you're reaching to a small group is not as exciting. And like, that's one of the reasons that I've kind of strayed from the gallery sculpture system in which you're really making to a small group of art lovers that go to the opening and you're trying to be purchased by even the smaller 0.01% of people that can afford your work. And so to try to make it broad, uh, we made a lot of efforts to, to try to create some really odd things that would attract people. But we realized that a lot of the same group were coming to the workshop. So we'll, we'll talk about the problem or how we tried to address that later. Uh, this one on the, the right is a rolling teeter-totter. And uh, it's made of a couple of big cable spools and then an axle and the, the teeter-totter. And if you get both the wheels going in opposite directions, you spin while going upside down like this. It's, it's like a, a carnival ride that's all mechanical made by sculptors. Um, and this bike, he's not doing it right, but <laughs> <laughs> you, you can bike along and then you throw your forward momentum forward and you do a roll and you land back on your wheels and keep going. After, after a lot of trial and error. It is ridiculous <laughs> watching people try to figure out how to make that bike work. Uh, this is the piece by a colleague uh, who teaches sculpture down at UC, Matt Lynch. He made this when he was in grad school. Uh, so it, it gets other people who are seeing this stuff excited enough to bring it up. This also rolls, but not with as much danger or mayhem as that other piece. <laughs> So, uh, Rod, I, apparently I'm supposed to talk when Rod just blindly stares at me yeah. and doesn't say anything. <laughs> That's very subtle. Um, so, our main race, we originally called the scramble because it's not a race like you're trying to get to the end first because then everybody goes really fast and it's over and it's totally boring for people who are watching. So, this, all of our races now take place in a big loop. And along the way, there are stations where you have to disembark whatever you're riding and then complete ridiculous tasks that we come up with each year. Normally, we have a night in December where we get super drunk and come up with the stations. And this year, we were too busy. And so we had to soberly come up with stations, which wasn't as fun. But we'll make sure that we'll make them exciting. They are really good. One of the ones this year, so they're all themed. So this year's circus theme. So one of my favorite ones for the scramble this year is kids have to box a guy in a big bear suit because we were looking at old circus pictures and they were like boxing a bear. So we have this giant bear suit with big boxing gloves that somebody's making for us and children have to go three rounds with the bear. But two years ago we did separate out the races because we were starting to realize we had a lot of little kids on low things and we had people like Jesse on that triple tall bike and it was starting to look perilous, like small children are going to be crushed by much bigger things. And our big quest is to not injure children. So we separated it out, and now adults, um, are anybody above the age of 16 can be in the dog's breakfast. It's the same format, it's just older individuals. And then the scramble is now kids or family teams, because a lot like that chariot that was up there, that was a whole kind of family affair, putting that one together. So if there are family teams there in the scramble. And, the, and the, the tasks you have to do in the dog's breakfast are a little more annoying, and you have to wear these gross latex masks this year and play musical chairs and whatever. Right. And so people are still coming to the workshops and reaching out to, to get some help on a few things, to weld things up for this, but a lot of family groups on their own are piecing together things for both the scramble and the dog's breakfast. Um, a couple of years back, we decided to have uh, the first kinetic picture show, and then last year we had the next kinetic picture show, which we thought was brilliant because we could use the same poster over and over again. It's always going to be <laughs> the next kinetic picture so show. Always be named now. Um, we are going to be having another uh, screening this year. It's going to be we, we, we actually decided to work with with um, the film studies people because they actually know film. Uh, oh my gosh, we just like films, and so they're taking it over and they're doing some screening of some silent films as well as uh, they're going to be getting some people on site doing some on site post production video editing of live footage that is shot during the day. So it's kind of like a day in the life of the Kinetics Fest. They're going to stitch it all together so by the end of the festival in this big RV they're going to be kind of pumping out this this video of the frolic. One of our aims is always to bring together lots of different groups in our community. So especially in a college town you have all these separate groups that almost never interact in any real true way. So one of the things for this year's uh, Next Kinetic Picture Show. We're doing three nights of film screenings, but the final night is Saturday the 16th, and it's going to be in the Uptown Park outdoors. And we'll be showing silent films, but then we're having uh, musicians from the high school come in and play along with the Buster Keaton films that'll be playing. So it's kind of a way to 
you know, college students are running the films, but then we have high school students playing music and hopefully the whole community to come to the event. So we have a lot of different people that show up. In, in addition to the racers, we have people kind of bring events. So this is something that was inspired by something that I saw at Burning Man, which was a, a stilt bar. You see all these people on stilts walking across the desert, and they go to a bar that only people on stilts can go to. Now, <laughs> now there, they're drinking vodka and, and whatever else they're drinking. Um, here, we have like really good root beer, Sprecher root beer. <laughs> but to be able to belly up to the bar and be able to get your fake mustache and your, your temporary tattoo and your glass of, of Sprecher root beer, uh, you got to learn how to walk on stilts. So we have like a stilt training area and once you go get your cred you can walk a certain distance or or hell if you just make it to the bar you're there. <laughs> if you can get over there that's, there's that's a lower the bar for children and a higher one for adults yeah hardly anybody made that higher one um, uh, we had some uh, we, we realized that you know there are a lot of things that could be going on and we could ask people to develop it but we realized that we really need to we need to reach out to people who already do this stuff professionally so we decided to really go nationally and regionally and to do more than just bikes so we brought in um, a blacksmithing group. Blacksmiths are no, the, 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 the salt of the earth. Folks. Yeah, the salt <laughs> of the earth. They're, they they come in. We've got a group that comes in from uh, Wisconsin. We've got some more that come up from Blue Hell Studio uh, here in Cincinnati. We have some that come down from the Southern Ohio Forge and Anvil Conference in um, Columbus. Anyway, they all come together and they teach blacksmithing. Uh, we last year we had a build your own skateboard. A two-day workshop. We have another one going on this year. So if anybody skates, you know anybody who skates and you want your own custom board, ideal like wheels, amazing trucks, like solid shapes, you can make your own kind of pattern. We're going to be running that as well. And this year it's just a one-day workshop, so it's easier for people from out of town. Uh, we bring in Station North Tool Library, which is a bunch of artists in Baltimore that have started a tool library. Some of you may be familiar with it. Uh, it's like a regular library, except you can check out like a pitchfork and a skill saw and a, you know, <laughs> a router. So they come and do that. We, um, we worked with Cincinnati Circus last year to bring in a trapeze workshop. workshop. And who are we bringing in this year? Um, my nose turns red is coming up this year. We are not doing trapeze this year due to a lack of funding. Those trapeze setups are really expensive. <laughs> um, but it was, it was pretty great last year. Strangely, um, now we're doing a circus theme and we don't have the trapeze, but last year it was all about flight and we're like, how can we fly without actually using airplanes? Oddly enough, also last year we had a grant to bring down, um, there's a group up in Dayton and they have a replica of the original Wright B flyer and they fly this thing around, these old guys in goggles. And so we were like, oh, this is awesome. There was this history organization that wanted to give us money. So we're like, oh, historical flight. And last year it rained hideously for the festival, and so they couldn't come. So like, they're coming this year, yeah. and we're still like, how are we going to tie this it's into like the, the circus, circus thing? Circus but they're going to be flying over, so yeah. it should be awesome anyway. <laughs> uh, Tommy and Happen, a lot of you probably know Tommy, and you probably know Happen in Northside. Uh, they've been coming in consistently from year... Since the very first year of the oh, festival. That's right. That's yeah. right. They, they would originally bring in their, um, their mobile toy lab right here. Now they just bring in whatever they, they want to bring in. They're, they're amazing artists and, and programmers, so they, they bring something in and we don't even question. We're just like, what do you want to bring in? It always rocks. Um, this is an image from last year. We did a workshop at the Contemporary Art Center and the idea was you could build your own personal flight suit. So everybody interpreted that really differently. Rod had made these rockets. I made this super sweet thing that then I left at the parking pay kiosk when at the end of the night in the parking garage by accident, I was so mad. But anyway, this girl <laughs> made this, she wanted to make a sugar glider, which is like a little flying squirrel type thing, which it was, it was an amazing night. That was super fun. A lot of these things we do, like that workshop, we're like, yeah, we'll make these suits and we'll use these tubes to pour, you know, concrete pilings in. And we'll just cut them and make them and stick them together with, Rod used to be a pig farmer, so we use these hog nose ring things that you put in pig noses to hold straps on. And it sounded like it would work. And then like the day before, we're like, God, this might be a huge disaster. Yeah. But it actually worked out amazing. We went down and spent a few hours prototyping it. And it, it was an incredible day. But we've been, so one of the things we really embrace is the idea that we're public amateurs. So we really throw ourselves into things that we are definitely not professionals about. <laughs> we try to be professional in our attitude, but uh, we, we just go in and we're like, we think we can figure out how to do this. We know how to do a bunch of stuff. Let's try it. 
And we work with a lot of kids who are pretty wary of really taking risks like that, especially in a big group setting. So one of our big hopes is that we're modeling risk taking for these children. Um, we were just doing a project that I think we'll show some images of in a yeah. few minutes with some boys at a group home. And we'd been working with them for weeks and weeks on a project. And one day we're like, oh my god, this is actually working. And they all looked at us like we were insane. We're like, well, we didn't know until this point in it whether this was going to work at all. And so we hope that we're doing a good thing by running around making stuff up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That whole master of fine arts that I have as my degree, that whole master thing, <laughs> we really call that into question. Um, we worked with No No Stranger. This is an art group, and they do a lot of sort of live, uh, life-size puppet type work up in Indianapolis. Um, they came down a couple of times, I guess three times now. Yeah, yeah, they're really amazing. And um, this is, again, I showed you this piece before. This is Matt Lynch, this is Rick Walhoy, and uh, it's... Um, Duct tape Joe right behind them. They, they came up and they, they created a, uh, a, a replica of the Apollo lander and they sent it up into the stratosphere with a camera um, to be able to take shots like this, like that. Wow. Uh, there's one more wow. That's, that's, uh, now, 20 minutes after launch, they lost it. Uh, they lost <laughs> contact with it, but they were able to use a GPS to find it in a forest preserve outside of Pittsburgh. It, it, like, it went up, and apparently once you go high enough, it cruises fast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so to do all this, we decided to, to, to create this organization, Make Tank, and we knew that we wanted to do a few basic things with it. We wanted to take all the people that don't normally interact with each other and put them together. We wanted to make sure that we could create programs so we could share skills like blacksmithing, uh, welding, sewing. We wanted to make sure also to develop people's confidence in their own creativity. So you don't hear somebody say, yeah, I could never be an artist. I, I can't even draw stick figures. It's like, it's OK. At the Connect Express, we just don't draw that many stick figures. <laughs> You're invited in. <laughs> and we all want to do this to make sure that we can reach out to people that wouldn't normally get it. I mentioned before that we realized that the the population we're reaching at with, a, with the bike building workshops were the sculptor or the, the professor's kids and the professors. And we thought there are a lot more people out there than that that could really use this. Right. Oxford's a town, I mean, every town's that way, but Oxford's funny because there's such this group of professors and all their children. And those kids go to everything, right? And we pull them out of school and take them to Washington, D.C. for the week. And they have so many advantages and opportunities. And we didn't want to be one more source of programming for, like, my kid, you know, because he does enough already. We wanted to reach kids who nobody's taking them anywhere, either because they just don't have the resources or the interest or the understanding that those things are available. And so, so somehow these two yahoos can provide programming. For them. Right, right. So as a result, we, we started developing not just the Kinetics Festival and workshops right before it, but we started thinking, what can we do to reach out to the kids that we want to reach year round? And so we thought, well, public school is the best place to do that because those kids have to be there all day anyway. Everybody's in there. If we can get into the public school system, we can reach the kids we want to reach. And additionally, there's a lot of after school programming in public schools that we could also kind of come and elbow our way into. So we developed two programs. One's called STEAM into Action, and the other is Access to Innovation. Uh, and started working with our local school district initially, the Talawanda School District, as well as groups like Big Brothers and Big Sisters who meet in the school buildings after school. So we, we, we kind of explored a lot of these things through some informal methods, but we realized that we needed to recruit an army. We needed a lot of people to do this work with us because there are just two of us, and I'm supposed to be teaching like during the week. <laughs> <laughs> right? so, uh, we needed a lot of people. We started experimenting. We started going out to a maker fair. So this is um, at the museum center, and uh, at the maker fair, uh, I guess two years two ago. Two years right? ago. And which we were showing people about Bernoulli. You know the Bernoulli principle, that reciprocal relationship between pressure and um, and velocity. I know you all know it, so I won't go into it. Uh, <laughs> but we were making hand helicopters on also these little levitating balls. Uh, but we're showing, you know, kids as, as young as like five and six, even four, I think, how to solder. 
Yeah, uh, we're giving them uh, propane torches, and they're like, why do I have to sign this waiver? <laughs> but, yeah. but, you know, so we're trying to kind of experiment to see exactly what would work, but we're really thinking about lateral and divergent thinking, you know, not necessarily looking at, at something that is really, well, I got loud. You did. Yeah, something that, <laughs> something that is just so uh, linear and um, destination focused, but being able to see what's around you. So I think one important idea that we may have jumped over. Oh, never mind. You're getting to it in the next. Yeah. I can now see the upcoming slide. Sorry. Just, just, just go to it now. <laughs> so um, we needed also to connect early. So this is what Kate was saying about the school system. You know, we're doing these workshops. We're trying to get all these adults doing all this cool stuff that adults normally do. But we're really trying to figure that we, we realize that we need to get people early, especially to give some of these opportunities. So once we started, really even the second year doing the bike building workshops, we uh, had some things we couldn't figure out, and the joy of a university is there's an expert in something within a mile of you. So anything we can't figure out, we just go find a professor of that. And so we started uh, consulting with people in engineering to help us solve some bike problems. And we started thinking, gosh, we're actually doing a lot of science and engineering and math work building these goofy contraptions just to be dorky for a day. And so maybe we should really start examining and, and taking advantage of this science that we're doing with kids and maybe help to find a way into science and math thinking for kids who don't habitually think of themselves as science and math people. And maybe kind of find a different, a different avenue into those fields for these kids. Right, so a lot of you know this. I mean, it's like stem to steam, but it, it can also be kind of steam wash. It's like, why don't we just add the A um, but get somewhere between engineering and math, but that's really not how it works. Really, the, the best type of methodology here is to be able to, to, to offer STEM teaching in a way that uh, might reach different kind of brains that, that would normally take it. In other words, try an artistic methodology or use design thinking of iteration and really kind of thinking about empathy as you make as opposed to memorizing charts and, and formulas. So we kind of first started this when we, we went to the engineering group and, and uh, they gave us some consultation. They also said, you know, we've got a capstone. Why don't we, why don't we give you some of our students? So that's cool. They're recruits for the Army. And uh, they created some uh, curriculum for a ninth grade physical science class at Talawanda. That was, that was their kind of contribution um, to this. They were trying to, to create some sort of STEAM-based curriculum. Now, it, it didn't work out as beautifully as we thought, but it was a good contribution. And they also wanted to make hovercrafts. So <laughs> they made the hovercrafts, they brought them to the Kinetics Festival, um, and they were, you know, a great, it was a great time. This is just kind of a, you can't see the, the, the leaf blower behind this kid. It looks like it's a magic tuft of air, but it's, it's really, it was really a, a motor back there. So that, um, Kay was mentioning before the Big Brothers Big Sisters, and I'll, I'll let you talk a little bit more about this because it's, something you've really developed. Yeah, so for the last three years, I've been running projects with Big Brothers Big Sisters after school programs. In Oxford, uh, they have a really robust program where bigs are the university students. They commit to at least a two-year time span with kids. And it used to be second through fifth grade. Now it's kindergarten through fifth grade that we work with. Um, the first year, we did this amazing shadow puppet play that was all kinetics, and the kids wrote their play. and. After that is when we really fell into everything's going to be somehow STEM, STEAM related. So our first STEAM project with Big Brothers was this uh, Space Quest project, which um, the kids designed their own solar system, then decided what solar body they wanted to be in that system. And we went through, I don't know what um, all images Rod has, but we went through a variety of steps. They eventually made a big 3D representation of their solar body, and then at the festival, they uh, put on a display of the dynamic interaction of all the bodies in their system. So it was this big like, mishmash of 20 kids and all these loops and people who are asteroids. And it, it was a pretty great day. We made a sun out of um, bike rims that we zip tied together into a huge dome. Um, this year we're doing stop motion animation with those kids based around, my initial idea was I wanted to do things that occur cyclically in nature so that we could do short films. I don't know if you've, any of you have made stop motion films, but short is good because <laughs> it takes a long time. And so I thought, well, if they can just do short films that are cyclical, I can loop them and we can display them at the festival. Um, we try to use the festival as a sharing place of all of our year-round projects so kids have this big public venue to show off what they've been working on. 
one of the things we struggle with with kids like my big brother's big sister's kids is getting someone to bring them to the festival. Um, so some years we have pretty good success rates and we'll get like two thirds of them, which is amazing. Last year I had maybe a quarter of, the, of my kids show up to the festival just because no one will actually get them there and it's really complicated for us, for insurance reasons, to bust them. So this year I thought let's do stop motion animation films and then even if they're not physically there, their film will be there, we'll film them talking about the choices they made and introduce themselves. So that is the plan this year, though they all really off-roaded and nobody has done my cyclical <laughs> idea, but they really took off on nature and so they all just started making things about um, animals and plants and like one of them is about rabbits in the Olympics and so crazy and they all have little outfits on and then um, Obi-Wan Kenobi comes in and awards medals at the end. So we're not sticklers uh, for me. I'm like, no, it has to be, you know, the life cycle of a monarch butterfly. So, yeah, I'm, I'm totally down with the Rabbit Olympics because they got really into it and they all took totally different approaches to the work and they just had a great time. And even kids who, for the first six or seven meetings, wouldn't even come in the room with us, once other kids started shooting video, these boys would come in and be like, could I possibly make a movie also? And I'm like, yeah. So that's how Obi-Wan Kenobi yeah, showed up. The whole thing about like, not being <laughs> sticklers for some of the stuff, being stickler would be, being a stickler for some of it would be like the old way of STEM was being taught. And I think that was driving a lot of people away Specifically, women and minorities were not really present in the STEM field in high school because usually in middle school is where they decided, well, this whole stickler thing is not so much fun. <laughs> but if, if, it, if the same content is being taught, content is being taught, or they're being exposed to it somehow in a way that, that is engaging for them, we're hoping that they will take courses in high school and then they'll move into the university program. And then they can populate the STEM fields in the United States, making it more innovative um, because it's more diverse. We've only got about 10 minutes. What's that? We've only got about 10 minutes. Okay, Just we're going to hustle. So, so yeah. uh, we did start another thing uh, a couple of years ago. Yeah, this the is our Steam second club. year of STEAM Club. Uh, it's just an after school, middle school club that we're running at Talawanda Middle School right now. And then in the fall, um, all grants providing, we will be starting these after school clubs at Frederick Douglass Elementary, which is in Walnut Hills, and Rothenburg Preparatory Academy in Over the Rhine. So we've, we've done a handful of things. We, we kind of start off with robotics using Lego Mindstorm sets, both programmable as well as controllable, and then giving them some obstacle courses um, that they had to perform with at the Kinetics Fest. Uh, we've introduced the idea of drawing with conductive tape. Uh, so actually making drawings, but because the tape is conductive, you can hook a battery up to one end and then LEDs and resistors throughout to make different sorts of circuits. And if you can use... It was 80s oh. day. That girl doesn't really wear that much eyeshadow normally. I'm always like, it's a <laughs> terrible picture of her and my crazy Kate outfit. Kate always says that. I'm always just like, what? She looks fine. <laughs> 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 she looks um, and if you can use tape as a wire, you can also use Play-Doh as a wire. So Play-Doh can be conductive and theoretically it can be insulative too. But we have yet to find the right recipe to make so it uh, insulate. But it does conduct. So this way you can make sculpture that becomes the wire. It looks like plastic explosive, but it is so <laughs> <laughs> Kind of working mathematically and also with some kits to be able to make some tetrahedral masks was a real hit for a couple of days. Yeah, we did this right before Halloween, just working with folded paper. There's a really cool guy on Etsy who you download the PDFs for these masks and they're pretty amazing actually. And, and a lot of it's just like keeping this group engaged. They're after school and well, a lot of you know the attention span of a lot of kids this age, and they really kind of need that constant stimulation. So even if we're not always, you know, we actually, we're, we're not offering the sticker approach to this group either. We're letting it come to them. Right. Rockets are always a huge hit with kids. Um, we build these systems to fire off just like soda bottle rockets, but then I thought we could probably use the same ones and modify them to start just doing air rockets that they can make and modify out of paper. So and they, they can, love it so much. Yeah, they, they, and they really get into the modification. Like, what if I put two nose cones on? What if I put a longer, skinnier nose cone? What if I put fins that, that spiral? Will it make it spiral? What if it has a tail? And they get to really experiment. They keep on running inside, making a modification. <laughs> the glue is hardly dry. I'm using hot glue, so it's still like <laughs> They're all burning, burning them themselves. Yeah. They're running back out to be able to put it on the launcher. It's a lot of burning. So this is the most recent project, and uh, I guess we just finished it two days ago. Yeah. Uh, so we've been, over the years, for 
probably four years on and off working with a group home in some, it's a neighborhood between Westwood and West Price Hill. Um, it's called Changing Lives Youth Services. One of the counselors there used to be a student of Rod's and he's who hooked us up with them initially. And we just love these boys and the energy they bring. Um, it's a group of about 20 boys between the ages of 12 and 18 who've been removed from their home of origin due to abuse. And they live here together. They're two different houses. And we just love working with them. So last year, um, Hive 13 invited us to be in the opening day parade with them, just as a way of kind of getting out the word about the Kinetics Festival. And we had so much fun in the parade. It was ridiculous. So afterwards, we were like, oh my gosh, the boys from Changing Lives would love being in this parade. It would be so cool for them to be like in their town in this huge event. So we wrote a grant to ArtsWave, got some funding. And for parade entries, they had to be connected to either Cincinnati, Finley Market, or the Cincinnati Reds. So we went in and tried to do a really minimal design thinking kind of brainstorming approach with the boys to come up with what are we going to build for this parade. And so their ideas were all over the place. And what we ended up landing on was their favorite things about Finley Market were the pickles. And so we <laughs> wanted to build a big pickle bike. That's the beginnings of the pickle bike. And they insanely love Grippo's barbecue potato chips. So we said we'd do a Grippo's bike as well. So a lot of these things, we, um, Rod, when he's not feeling well, gets on Craigslist and looks for old industrial bicycles. And then we have to drive around and buy industrial bicycles. Yeah, if, you, if you have any in your garage, it will save you getting on Craigslist. Yeah. Just give me a call. So Worksman makes these big trikes and four-wheel bikes that were for use in factories. But as a result, they're really heavy and hardy, and they can take a lot of weight. So I ran down and bought this uh, trike from some dude in, off an exit somewhere in Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> With my trusty Craigslist knife, so I wasn't kidnapped and stabbed. And, and Rod had another bike, which we donated for, the, for use for the chip bike. So we just um, used CPVC. And you can bend it and heat it and form it and cut it in half, and then it's really bendy. And started making this pickle bike, <laughs> which was. The other bike that we had is a four wheel, uh, it's not a trike, it's a quad of some sort, but we made sort of a Conestoga wagon out of it with peaked tops. So if you can imagine a bag of chips or something. Like well, chips you'll there. see, there's a picture, side. isn't there, eventually? There is. I, 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 it's a few slides away, but a bag of chips on its side, and uh, we had to sort of cloak it with this big cloth um, tent. And then we, we projected onto the tent um, a, a photo of a, of a grip of this barbecue bag, and then worked with the boys to kind of cartoon this thing out, and eventually painted it up uh, to become this. Oh, there's the grip of the bag. Yeah. yeah, that was Monday. <laughs> So one of the, I was going to mention with the pickle bike, years ago we realized not everybody wants to weld a bike, not everybody has time to weld a bike. So uh, we came up with these things called bike spikes, which sometimes work amazing and sometimes we're like, oh, these spike spikes. I don't think we have any here today. But um, it's just a bent piece of metal that you can kind of lay up on the pipe of a, a bike. And then it's got a little tapered spike that comes out and it perfectly fits half inch CPVC. So we put those on with, normally we start out with just zip ties and then later we'll hose clamp them onto a bike. And then you can attach the CPVC and then bend it and fold it and do whatever you need to do to make a dill pickle bike or yeah. whatever other kind of bike you want to make. Yeah, that way you don't have to chop up a perfectly good bike. You can keep your bike in. A bike is a pretty tightly engineered thing. Once you start moving cranks around and seats around, it changes it around. It's never as good. Um, but this way you can keep a bike running and you can just build a float around it. Right. Jason um, was a boy at Changing Lives who I just adore and who I didn't realize till we were almost done with the project. One of the other boys said, you know what, Jason never talks to anybody. But he just like chats and chats and chats with us forever. And one day we were working on the pickle bike. He was in, obsessed with the pickle bike. And he's like, I think I should be wearing a pig mask while I'm driving the bike. And I was like, Absolutely. that is an amazing idea. I will make you a pig mask. So I modified one of those masks that we were making with the other group that used to be a fox into that pig. And he would not take the pig mask off. <laughs> he's like, it's really hot in here. I said, you can take it off. He's like, no, no, I'm not taking it off. So we worked <laughs> with a group of about four or five core boys at this uh, group home. But three of them were able to come out and be in this parade with us. So, um, 
uh, Frankie and Jason and Jude, and two in one in the, the chip bike, and then the other in the pickle bike. And then we also worked with a, a group from UC who came out with another trike, and then we had these Mosh and Brew and, and mobile bike uh, folks in the tall bikes all running around. So it, it was a big day for us, but it's, I'm, I'm thinking that it must have been a, a much bigger day for these kids. So uh, we've kind of talked a little bit about the Kinetics Fest and how we started, and then how we really have kind of gone wide, but we can come back to this. If, if, um, if you can come out to the festival, I, if you haven't made it before, uh, please check it out. If you have made it before, come on back. It's a really unique opportunity to just, you know, let your freak flag fly and, um, and do it without risk. And um, you want to say anything more? No, I think that's good. We always tell people if they come once, they'll always come back because it's the most fun day of the year. Yeah. yeah. It's a good day. Thank that's you guys it. for Thank your you time. <laughs>